Welcome guys, we are continuing with Accounting Grade 10, the bookkeeping of a sole trader. Remember a sole trader, it's a business that's owned by a single person. Now remember, we're kicking you off in Grade 10 with a sole trader. We will continue with partnerships in Grade 11. We'll look at companies in Grade 12. But the stuff that we are doing today will influence the way you will work in grade 11 and 12. You really need to know your work in grade 10 to be able to answer and excel in grade 11 and 12. So let's look at the accounting cycle today. We're going to look at the accounting cycle. Where's my first point of entry? Where's my last point of entry? And then we're going to look at the double entry principle. Now the double entry principle, remember for every debit, debit on the left hand side, we have a credit and credit is on the right hand side. So we will look at that today. But let's jump into the accounting cycle. Now very first, for an entry to happen within our accounting cycle, we need to have a transaction taking place. Now we've looked at transactions before. What is a typical transaction? You have a shop, a person comes into the shop, they buy something from you, they take that product and exchange that product for cash. So you receive money, they receive their product. So it's where two people meet, they negotiate something between them and then with that negotiation both parties are happy and receive something in exchange. So that's our very first point of our counting cycle. Now what happens after a transaction and this is where we will record the first thing so the transaction will firstly be recorded in a source document now let's go and look at the source document we have a few source documents we'll have a cash register tape now what is a cash register tape my guys in class sometimes question, what's a cash register tape? Because it's a till slip. Yes, it's a till slip. Remember, you will get the slip, but at the back of that till, that cash register, there's a duplicate roll. Okay? So that duplicate roll will record all the slips for the day. Now remember, the till slip will be given to the customer, and the cash register tape or the cash register roll will be kept within the business and then also receipts a receipt book we have a receipt book we write out a receipt we issue the original receipt to the customer we will keep the duplicate receipt and for both of them if we look at them it's a receiving of money so the cash register tape means we receive money and the receipt means we receive money let's continue and look at the slide we also have a check counterfoil. Now the check counterfoil and the bank statement will go to your payment side. You are paying someone. So in businesses we have checkbooks, we write out a check, we pay someone. So therefore a payment is being made, the check is issued to the, um, the, the, cust uh, the, the, the uh, creditor or to the the entity you are paying, maybe you're paying your telephone bill or your water and electricity bill, you are paying someone. But the bank statement, nowadays we have a very nice electronic banking system. So we have a banking app on our phone, we can log on to our bank account um, at home or at the business. So we can make payments via our internet banking. And if we say transfer money from our account and pay someone, we call it EFT. So we'll have EFTs, we'll have deposit, um, uh, debit orders, we'll have stop orders, all appearing on this bank statement. And that means we are paying someone. Great, let's continue. The next one we'll look at is petty cash voucher. Now remember we have petty cash as an asset, we have money in the business in a small little tin, we keep it safe in that tin, and whenever we need to buy small things, so small cash expenses, we can use some of this petty cash. 
So say someone comes in for a small donation, you can issue from the petty cash. Or someone wants to go and buy pens or milk for the, for the office. What can we do? We can issue money from the petty cash. So therefore petty cash will go down and that person will go and buy something, return with a slip and the change and that will be recorded in the petty cash box. But let's continue. We will also have invoices as a source document. Now invoices, you need to be very clear about this. When we sell goods on credit, we have a data. We will issue that data an original invoice. What will the business then keep? The duplicate invoice will be kept within the business. Now, remember, as we can sell on credit, we can also buy things from many suppliers and companies. So we can buy for cash and on credit. So we can also buy on credit. And what will they issue us then? They will issue us the original invoice and they, our creditor, the person we owe money to, they will keep the duplicate within their books. But now we're getting to a point to, we, I need you to understand that in our books, we owe money. Because we owe a different person, a different company, we owe a creditor, that creditor sees us as a debtor. Now keep that in mind. And vice versa also applies. But now, say you buy something at a shop. You buy a nice t-shirt, you thought it will fit you, but now you swipe your card, you go home, you bought it on credit, and now you get home, now it does not fit. What do you do with it? You can return it. Now remember, when items are returned, so your debt has bought something, they return it now to the business, do you get the stock back? Yes, you get the stock back, but now, what will I record it as? And now I have another source document. Let's look at it. We will have a credit note. Now, credit note means... The data, which is an asset, owes me less money. And remember, assets are plus minus account. Plus on the debit, minus on the credit. Now, debtors will go down. And debtors will go down on the credit side. And why will the debtor go down in this case? The debtor returned goods to us so they don't owe us anymore. Now, let's look at the creditors. When we buy something and we think it's... a uh, but bad quality, we're not happy with the items, we can return it to our supplier. So remember, we owe again a liability is a minus plus account. So minus on the debit, plus on the credit. But now you need to keep in mind, we owe them. We owe them on the credit side. Now, we return the stuff. So it will be entered on the debit side. We don't owe them as much. So therefore, we'll have a debit note. And there's the first point of entry, your source document. Now let's continue to our next step. Your next step will be journals. Your journals will be your second point of entry. Now what journals do we have? I did touch on all of them. We'll have your cash receipts journal when we receive money. We will also have your cash payments journal when we pay with the check or through the bank statement. Remember, internet banking, we have EFTs, we have debit orders, we have stop orders. All those things will be regarded as payments. Then we'll have a petty cash journal. Now remember, petty cash, the money in the tin, we use it for small payments. So the, the lady or the guy in charge of the petty cash will issue a bit of money. The person requested the money will go to the shop, buy something, return that slip, which is the first entry, the slip, and a petty cash voucher will be issued. And that will be recorded then in the petty cash journal. Then, when we sell on credit, we'll have a debtor's journal. But let's continue. We'll also have a creditor's journal, a debtor's allowance journal, a creditor's allowance journal. And then later on this year, we will look at a general journal, a salary journal, and a wage journal. So you will see we have about 10 journals in total. But now, remember, we have a lot of source documents. Now, what do we do with this? Can we exactly say how much we received and how much we've paid? Not really, because we have so many pieces of paper. So what do we do? We are trying to sift through the information and summarize it in a certain format. And this is what formal businesses will do. They will summarize all their source documents, firstly, into a journal. 
again, we have cash journals, we have credit journals, we have the general journal and the salaries and wages journal. But now remember, how many months do we have in a year? Remember, we have a financial year, so we have 12 months. So we'll have 12 of these journals every single year. Now think of this, you have 12 receipt journals, 12 payment journals, we have 12 petty cash journals. Will you exactly, at any point of time, know how much money you have in your bank account? You won't, right? So therefore, we created a third step in our accounting cycle. Let's go and look at our next step. We'll have ledgers. Now we have three ledgers in accounting. Your very first ledger will be your general ledger, and this is the main one. If you know and understand the general ledger, I'm sure you will be flying through accounting and find it very easy, and you'll enjoy it. You'll be able to answer a lot of questions, so know the rules of the general ledger. And we are going to look at that in today's lesson and in future. But now, you need to remember this general ledger. It's broken into two pieces. Let's go and look at the pieces. We have section one, which is your balance sheet. And then we'll also have section two, which is your nominal section. Now, what will I place under balance sheet section? These are items that I will use for longer than a year. It will be all your assets that we use shorter than a year. But I said the word assets. All your assets will be included here. All your liabilities will be included here. And then lastly, your two main owners' equity accounts, your capital and your drawings. Your nominal section, very easy to remember, incomes and expenses. But let's continue. We also have subsidiary ledgers. Now let's look at the two subsidiary ledgers. We have a debtor's ledger and a creditor's ledger. Remember, we are busy with the third point of entry. Now these two ledgers are for the debtors and then for the creditors. Now, in your debtors ledger, and we'll look at this in detail in the next two weeks to come, we'll have a specific space we will we'll treat individual debtors separately. So we'll have a separate account for each individual debtor, and we'll have a separate account for each individual creditor. And therefore, we can at any point of time say how much a certain debtor owes and how much we owe a certain creditor. Now, let's move on with the accounting cycle. After all these ledgers, we'll have a trial balance. Now, a trial balance is there to see that you didn't leave anything out specifically or that you didn't make mistakes. Remember, a trial balance is there to show my debit side from our general ledger equals my credit side. And then what we'll look at in the third term is your year-end adjustments. And these adjustments will be placed in your financial statements. Now, as you can see, we'll have two statements, your income statement and your balance sheet. Now, guys, these two form a big, big part of your accounting process in grade 10, 11, and 12. We'll focus on these two in term three. But know that they are there, and that's where our aim lies. We need to get you to know all the small entries in your journals, how to post these journals to your ledgers, how to compile a trial balance, and then how to do the adjustments, and then to complete the statements. But now let's quickly go and look at the summary. I have a big five for every transaction. The big five meaning we have a date, that's number one. We'll have a document number, which is number two. We have a number three, who paid me. We have a number four, the amount we received. And we have a number five, why did we receive money or why did we pay? And you can use these five notes for all, mostly all journals, especially your cash journals, your three cash journals, your debtors and your creditors and the two allowance journals. Let's continue. Let's look at the journals in our table format. So just quickly, your source documents again, your duplicate receipts, and your cash register tape, all going to the CRJ, and then very important, your bank will go up because bank is an asset, and the assets increase on the debit side. So bank will always be debited. I'm going to go through all the main accounts in every journal. We have a check counterfoil, for example, 
And these check counterfalls will be placed in your CPJ. And that is when your bank goes down. Your bank will go down because we have expenses that we pay or we have assets that we purchase. And remember, bank is an asset and the asset will go down on the credit side. And as you can see, I've placed it under the general ledger, debit and credit side. Let's go and look at the Petty Cash Journal. The Petty Cash Journal has a Petty Cash voucher. We will place it in a Petty Cash Journal. We have expenses paid. And remember, if we pay expenses or buy assets or the owner draws, your Petty Cash will go down. And remember, assets go down on the credit side again. Let's continue with the credit sales. When we sell on credit, we will have the duplicate invoice. We'll place those duplicate invoices first in your DJ. We'll close the DJ off to these four accounts. Remember, your debtors, which is an asset, will go up. Your cost of sales and expense will go up. And I will explain that to you now in detail. Your sales also goes up. It's an income. And your trading stock will go down. Now, let's quickly finish up. Your debtors... Allowance journal will have a credit note. Your debtors allowances will go up. It's an expense. Trading stock and asset, it will go up as well. It's on the debit side. Debtors control and asset will go down on the credit side. Cost of sales and expense will go down on the credit side. Now, we can also, what? Buy on credit. So we'll have the original invoice. The original invoice will go to your creditors journal. Your creditors control will go up and then when we return, the account will be debited. Why? Because creditors control goes down on the credit side. Write down the accounting cycle when cash is received from the owner. And guys, answer this quickly and I'll give you the answer after the ad break. Okay guys, I know you got this right. Let's quickly look at the answer. Firstly, you'll have a source document. And the source document will be a duplicate receipt. Number second, your second entry will be you take those receipts to your journal. Your journal being the CRJ, you received money. Then you'll place those journal entries. You'll close the journal off, total everything. Take it to the general ledger. Your bank will go up on the debit side. And remember the owner gave the money, so capital will go up on the credit side and then lastly when you have time you'll do a trial balance so you'll see that your debit side is equal to your credit side and then you are done so let's go and look at the double entry rule in full detail the double entry rule is firstly applicable to the general ledger and this is very important to know when your debits are not equaling your credits so your debit side is a certain amount and it differs from the credit side after you did the trial balance. You know that you've made mistakes. You've placed amounts on the wrong side. Maybe you didn't enter the same amount on the debit side or you left something out on the credit side. So therefore you can double check and go and look for your error. Now, know this. For every debit, there should be a credit. And therefore, debits will always equal your credits. And that means your debit side will equal your credit side in the trial balance. And if this happens, you should smile because most likely you have everything right and you're in balance and that you will get a very good mark. Now, remember, if you forget dates and you, you left out something, maybe you left out a transaction and it's not on the debit or the credit side. So therefore, you left something out totally. You won't get full marks, but you're still in balance. Therefore, know that although you balance, it doesn't mean that you have full marks. You have to include everything into the books to then, again, let me just rephrase that. You need to include everything in the books and then have a debit and a credit for all entries. Then you'll be fine. So, I want to quickly leave you with a question. I'm going to give you a minute to answer it. The accounting equation. Do you remember the accounting equation? Quickly write it down. I'm giving you a minute.
Okay, guys, let's look at the answer. Remember, the answer will be, let's look at it. Your assets will always equal owner's equity plus liabilities. Now, know this and keep it in mind. You have assets. Assets increase on the debit side. You have your liabilities, that is items that I owe, will increase on the credit side. But now we have this thing called owner's equity in the middle of all things. Now remember, owner's equity have four different types of accounts. I'm quickly going to show this to you. I'm going to show it on this sheet for you so that you can see it. You have your drawings, which is a plus minus, and you'll have your expense accounts which is also a plus minus. Then on the other side, you have your happy account, your capital. It's a minus plus. And then you'll have your opposite of expenses, your income, which is also minus plus. Now, I always say this side is my happy side, my debit side, my unhappy side. And let's quickly explain it. As soon as your drawings go up, the owner loses money within the business because he's drawing all of his money out of the business. As your expenses go up and up and up, the owner is also losing his profit within this business. Now, let's look at your income and capital. Say he withdraws a lot of capital. You see it on the debit side. Your capital goes down. It will also make him unhappy. He's got less owner's equity now. As income decreases on the debit side. We're also making him unhappy because now he's losing his income. But what makes him happy? When your drawings goes down, he draws less and less, so therefore he's got more say, he's got more money in the business. Expenses go down. Won't expenses make you smile when they go down? Will may definitely make me smile. So when your expenses go down, the owner is happy, makes more profit, he's got more say within the business. Same thing with capital and income. When they go up, the owner should be happy because he's selling and selling and selling, therefore creating more income, and more income gives him more profit. So remember, your owner's equity is split into four accounts. Now remember, what makes it negative? When your expenses go up, your drawings goes up, your capital goes down, your income goes down. And what makes your owner's equity go up? Positive. When drawings goes down, when expenses go down, when capital goes up, and when income goes up. And that's I call the key. But now remember, your assets will also form part of your debit entries, and your liabilities will be forming part of your mostly your credit entries when they go up. So I have a nice abbreviation. I call it debt click. Debt means debit, expenses, assets, and drawings. I'll say it again. Debt means debit, expenses, assets, and drawings. Click means credit, liabilities, income, and capital. So that is debt click. But now let's go and do the accounting equation. Now we're going to look at how do I analyze a transaction? How do I get the big five? And how do I use this to answer an accounting equation question? I'm going to do the first one with you. Let's look at it together. On the first, buy goods worth 4,500 from Google suppliers and pay by check triple five. Now let's go and see. Do we have the date? We have the date. And as you can see, we have columns here. We have the source document, we have the journal, the date, the amount, general ledger debit, general ledger credit. We have assets, owner's equity, and liability columns. Now, let's see. On the first, that's your very first one, we buy goods. And how are we buying these goods? We are paying by check. Great. Do we have the check number? Yes, we have checked triple five. Now, what will I call the source document that I as business will keep? I will keep the 
check, counter, foil. Now what is that? The check stub. Remember when you have a checkbook, there's a small little piece on the side. I will keep the check counter foil within the business. The check will be issued to the person I'm paying. And who am I paying in this regard? I'm paying Gugu suppliers. I don't have a uh, column for it now, but where will I pay? I will pay in the CPJ. And now, what is the amount I'm paying? I'm paying four and a half thousand rand. And now, your general ledger debit and credit. I want to ask you, what are we doing? What is happening now? We are buying goods with money. So goods meaning trading stock. Remember, goods will be trading stock. So let's draw the two T accounts quickly. Remember trading stock. I'm going to abbreviate it, but please don't abbreviate in your papers. Trading stock. We are buying more and more. It will go up on the debit. And then we are using cash. And cash will also be an asset. And the asset will also be plus minus. And what is happening with my money? My money is going down on the credit, right? Because I'm using money to buy stock. So therefore, your general ledger debit will be trading stock. And your bank will be credited. And now, both of them are what? Both of them are assets. So let's look at it. Assets will go up. But the asset will also go down. So your asset will be a plus minus equals, remember, that's your accounting equation. Assets equals owner's equity plus liabilities. Did we touch our owner's equity account? Definitely not. Did we touch a liability account? Definitely not. Hopefully you know how to do. I'm going to give you a next one. Let's look at it. Analysis of transactions. Cash sales. 10,000 Rand, the markup is 66 and two thirds. Quickly, I'm giving you two minutes. Do the transactional analysis for me in the table four. So guys, I hope you got this one right. This one counts at least 10 marks in a test or exam. So let's start the beginning. On the second, we had cash sales of 10,000 Rand. So we sold goods. Listen to what I'm saying. We sold goods for cash. Okay, so we received money for selling goods. I have a markup. What does that mean? I have a cost price. Remember, I had to buy these goods at a certain price. 
hopefully the cost price will be lower than your selling price. Now let's go and see what is my formula. I'm going to quickly work it out here. I have the selling price and your formula will be your selling price will be 10,000. So therefore I need to use it in my way, uh, my, my way to calculate your cost price. So cost price will be sales over 1 times 100 over 100 plus 66,6 6 recurring. Now on your calculator you need to use at least four sixes. Now remember, what did I do? If you look at 100 divided by 166,66, you will get smaller than 1. If you get something smaller than 1, you know that your cost price will be smaller than your selling price. Now, if I give you the cost price, can I work out the selling price then? Yes, I just change it around. I'll take the 166,6666 at the top, divide by 100. Know the formula, it's a grade 9 formula. Then you will work out that your cost price is a full 6 thousand rand. Now, let's quickly look at the answer. Your source document will be your cash register tape. We'll put it from the CRJ. Now we'll have two amounts. We'll have the 10,000, which is your sales, and we'll have the cost price of six. Now I like to do the accounts. I like to say bank goes up on the debit side. So I can say bank goes up. I'm getting money, right? Why am I getting money? Because I had a sale, and sales will be an income, income a minus plus account, and it goes up on the credit side, so I can say sales. And therefore, bank is an asset, your asset will go up, but now no, sales is an income account, and your owner's equity will go up, no liabilities. Now no, plus equals my plus. And then, no, whenever you have a cost of sale, of a sale, we'll have a cost of sale. So your cost of sales will go up, we have bigger costs, but remember, your influence on owner's equity is negative, so we can go to owner's equity and say negative, why? Because we have a debit entry in cost of sales. Now, who's married to cost of sales? Know this, cost of sales is married to trading stock, and trading stock, my asset, is going down because I'm selling it. So I can go to the credit side and say, trading stock, my asset is going down. And as you can see, we are again, my accounting equation is in balance. Assets minus equals owner's equity minus plus zero. Minus equals minus. I'll see you right now. Okay, guys, I hope you are understanding the analysis of transactions. I hope you're getting everything right. So I want to give you another one to do in a literally a two minutes. Let's give you two minutes. Let's read it together. The owner, James Fune, withdrew 500 rand from the business with check number 558. Good luck.
Let's mark your answer. Let's look at it together. So the owner, Jay Fune, withdrew 500 Rand. So easy marks. Let's quickly put it in the amount column. We have 500 Rand. From the business with a check. So he withdrew the cash with a check. So we gave the check to the bank to get the cash right. So we wrote on that check cash, 500 Rand. What will the business keep? The check counter foil. So I'm going to abbreviate the check counter foil. We just write it incorrectly. And then the journal, we are paying Jacob, CPJ, and the date, there it is, it's the third. Now, what happened with your cash? Remember bank? Bank is the asset. Now, I like to draw the, draw the T accounts. It just helps me a bit. So bank is an asset. We know bank is an asset. We studied it. It's a plus minus. Do we have more money now or less in the business? The owner took, right? So there's less money in the business. So let's say bank goes down. But with the GAR principles we did, remember when the owner takes, we need to keep it completely separate and we call it drawings. Now drawings, like an expense, will go up on the debit side. But now you need to remember that drawings that goes up on the debit side isn't very good for my owner's equity because if the owner takes all of his money out of the business he's got less equity within the business although drawings goes up it makes him unhappy and it makes your owner's equity negative so your ledgers your bank sorry let's quickly clean that one your drawings will be debited And your bank will be credited. And as you can see, bank and asset going down. And your aim is to always balance, right? The drawing's going up, but remember it's bad for owner's equity. Owner's equity going down, liability is no effect. I trust you got it right. But let's practice some more. Let's look at another one. Pay Thule traders the following by check. We are paying 24,000 Rand. But what did we pay? We paid 300 Rand for stationery and the rest for merchandise. I'm going to give you two minutes to answer this one. Okay, hey guys, this one was a bit tricky. I hope you got it right. Let's look at it together. 
Number four, that is the day. So let's go and write it in. There's the fourth. And then they say we paid by check. Now remember, paid by check can mean we are paying now with a check. But say I include different wordings. I pay by EFT. What does EFT stand for? Electronic fund transfer. Or I have a debit order. I'm also paying. Okay. So paying means I'm giving out money. Now let's go and see what is the source document. The source document will be, again, your check, counter, foil, the check stub on the side. And you are paying, so it will be your cash payments journal. Now, what did we buy? Why did we pay? Let's go and look. We've paid 24000 in total. So this 24000 was for two items. The very first item, they say, was stationary. And I'm going to abbreviate stationery a bit. It's written there. We bought 300 worth of stationery. Our stationery will be an expense. And then they tell you the rest was for merchandise. Now, merchandise can also be referred to as trading stock. That's the real word we would like you to learn for accounting purposes. Trading stock. So trading stock can be either goods, merchandise, um, stock, Anything that we buy to sell will be regarded as trading stock. Now, if we have 24,000 here as your total payment, 300 was for stationery, how much is left? 23,700 will be left and that will be for your trading stock. Now, let's go and look at it. We have three accounts, as you can see, your bank firstly, bank again an asset. It's a plus minus, your assets going down. Because I'm buying stationery and I'm buying trading stock. And as you can see, these two amounts together gives me the 24,000. But remember, trading stock again, an asset. The asset going up with 23,700. And what happens to your stationery? Your stationery will be an expense. And remember, this expense is bad for my owner. I hate expenses. And therefore, stationery goes up, but it's got a negative effect on my owner's equity. Now, how do I complete my entry? I have to go and say the amount will be 300. And therefore, stationery, as you can see, will be debited. And then your bank will be credited because I'm giving out money. And assets will not be affected. Assets will be affected. Bank is an asset. Sorry. And remember, we are always aiming to equal. Our assets equal owner's equity plus liabilities. Now, assets minus owner's equity, as you can see, also a minus, no liabilities. And now we are in equal. We are doing the double entry principle. Let's continue. We have the trading stock now. You're 23,700. And we'll have trading stock as a debit. Why? Because we have more trading stock. We bought more. And your bank will be a credit. We have less money. But now, remember, it's a plus minus. So we don't have owner's equity or liabilities affected. And minus 23,700 plus 23,700 will equal zero. And zero plus zero equals zero. And as you can see, we are in balance. We are 100% correct. Now let's do the last one together. The cash register indicated sales of 17,400. Now they tell you further 7,300 was for credit card sales and the rest was for cash. A markup percentage used was 100%. Now what do I do with credit card sales? It's a complete new one. Let me think of it. I have a credit card. That credit card, it's got my, my name on it with a bank's name on it, right? So I apply at any bank to get a credit card if I'm credit worthy. They will give you that credit card. Now you go to the shop. You don't have money left in your account, but you have a credit card. So can I swipe that credit card to buy on credit? And the answer is yes. Now, what will the bank now do? They will pay the money to the supplier or to the shop 
where you have swiped that card. So who do you owe? Do you owe the shop or do you owe the bank? And hopefully you got it right. You owe the bank money. So how do I go about this? Exactly the same. A credit card sale, exactly the same as a cash sale. So let's go and see. Cash sale, we'll have your cash register tape or cash register roll. We'll place it in your CRJ. The date is the 5th. And now the amount. Remember, we have 17,400 in total. So that's your amount. 17,000. 400. Now, did we receive more money? Your, your bank went up. Your bank is an asset. It went up. Why did it go up? Because I had a sale. So, your sales went up here. And remember, sales, good for my owner's equity. So, I can say bank plus, owner's equity plus, liability is nothing. And therefore, we just write in the debit column bank, in the credit column sales. But now, remember, when you have a sale, we have a cost of sale. So what do you need to do? You have to go and work it out. 17,400 over 1 times 100 over 200. And your cost of sale will then be, let's quickly see, 8,700. And let's place it in here. And remember, your cost of sale will then be debited. I like to connect the two. Your trading stock and asset going down. Remember, they are married. It's a minus, minus zero. And as you can see, we are balancing. Guys, hope you got it right. See you soon. Bye-bye.